Good morning, and welcome to Greater Rose of Sharon's Sunday morning service. Join us on Facebook Live at 10 a.m., and it will be repeated at 11 Sunday morning. Also, you can watch it in a rerun on YouTube at 6 p.m. So sit back, get your Bibles out, and join us for Sunday morning with Pastor Cedric Cross at the Rose. Praise the Lord, saints. Good morning, Greater Rose of Sharon. Good morning, Greater Rose of Sharon. As you can see, we might be few in number here in the choir, and minus uh, our uh, musician here, but we got DJ. Amen. Praise the Lord. And we're here to praise the Lord this morning. Amen? Amen. I don't know about you. I'm here to praise the Lord no matter what. Amen? Amen. 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 Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Come on, help us out. Yes. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Yes. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. That sounds good. Let's do that again. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Oh, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Yes. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Yes, Amen. Why don't we just give the Lord a hand clap of praise. <laughs> Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. We thank God for a fifth Sunday. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Fifth Sunday now. Our musicians are, are out on today. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and worship anyhow. Yes, Amen. Because this is the day the Lord has made. Yes, sir. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. We slept last night. Woke up this morning, got dressed, and made it out to the house of prayer. So since we are here, we might as well give God our best praise. Amen. 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 Ask if everyone would please stand as we read the Great Commission together, Matthew chapter number 28. Beginning at verse 19, and I'm sure you have all probably have it memorized by now. Matthew 28 and verse number 19, and it reads, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. <clears throat> All right, so here's what we're going to do, y'all. This is fifth Sunday, and we're going to make some adjustments to the order of service. So, choir, um, if y'all can come together for one more. Now, if y'all got two, and you ready, then y'all go ahead. But, but if you're struggling just to get one, I'm not going to put, put no more pressure on you. Okay? All right. So here's what we're going to do. We've done the uh, Great Commission. So we're going to ask, uh, Rem Walker's going to come up. He's going to do our altar prayer. Then the choir's going to come back with a selection. Then Sister Cross is going to come up and talk a little bit about our mission outreach this, morning, uh, this afternoon when we go to the nursing home. And then we're going to have the announcements. And it may change after I say this, so we're just going to follow the Holy Spirit. Okay. And after our announcements, if the choir, if y'all ready, then y'all can give me blessings. If not, I'm going to go on and preach, okay? 
So we're going to follow the Holy Spirit's direction. So at this time, we're going to have Reverend Walker come up and lead us in our altar call prayer. Church, say amen. amen. Church, say amen. amen. How many of y'all glad to be here this morning? Amen. Let us stand all over the building. How many of y'all know you can call on God whenever? I'm going to say that again. You can call on God whenever you need him. We all walk around with these phones to keep contact with our loved ones. But how many of y'all know that if you want to contact God, all you got to do is pray? And I am a firm believer. I'm a witness. I'm a living proof that God does hear and answer prayers. I'm not trying to fool y'all this morning. Uh, whatever it is that you're dealing with, I stopped by to tell you this morning that God hears and answers prayers. That should be good news for somebody this morning. Whatever you're struggling with, uh, my brothers and sisters, we serve an omnipresent God. And you might want to say, what does he mean by omnipresent? Uh, he's everywhere at one time. So when I need him out on 440, somebody might need him on John Barrow. <laughs> when uh, someone in California need him, somebody in Europe may need him. Um, somebody in Australia may need him, but somebody right here on 28th and Martin Luther King might need him. But that should be good news to know that we serve a God that is everywhere. I remember when I was out in the world, when I took that swallow, that drink, or whatever it was, I, I could feel it. And not only could I feel it, you could look at me and tell that I had something in me. But now that I serve a true and living God, every now and then, God will drop by and let me feel his Holy Spirit. He'll let me feel his presence this morning. You know, everybody have all these different gods that they serve, but I serve a true and living God. And you might say, why do you say you serve a true and living God? Because when I was hungry, he fed me. Uh, when I was thirsty, he gave me water. When I, was, when I was broke down to my last dime and I didn't see my way out, the God that I serve provided for me. So whatever it is that you're dealing with, I stopped by to remind you this morning that you serve an omnipresent God. God knows we're in election time and we all know that man seem to think that he's in the control. But I stopped by to remind you again this morning that God is in control. Don't let nobody fool you this morning. God is in control. And whatever happens in your life, my life, on this earth, God allowed it to happen. Don't let man think you, trick you into thinking that he running something, because if justice from the line, God ain't, the man ain't running nothing but his mouth. But God is in control. Let us close our eyes this morning and just focus on the master this morning. Whatever you're dealing with, just push pause on it right now. and Just let's give God some praise this morning because he is worthy of all praises. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come this morning, Lord, as humble as we know how, Lord. First of all, to tell you thank you, Lord. Thank you for touching us this morning, Lord. Lord, thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord, and closing our right mind, Lord. Lord, we just come out to tell you thank you this morning, Lord. Lord, thank you for the activity of our limbs this morning, Lord. Lord, they don't move like they used to move, Lord, but I thank you, Lord, that they still moving, Lord. And that's enough to tell you thank you this morning, Lord. Lord, thank you, Lord, for dispatching your angels around our bedside, Lord, and the Four posts of our homes last night when 
The devil was running to and fro, Lord, seeking whom he may devour, Lord. When danger was all around us last night, Lord, Lord, you would look beyond all of our faults, Lord. And you let our golden moments roll on a little bit longer, Lord. And we come by to tell you thank you this morning, Lord. Lord, we went to the refrigerator this morning, Lord. It, it wasn't steak and eggs, Lord, but you provided manna for us this morning, Lord. And we stopped by to just tell you thank you this morning, Lord. Lord, when we put our clothes on, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for, for raiments to put on our back this morning, Lord. We just thank you this morning, Lord. Lord, when we looked out in our driveway, Lord, we still had something to drive this morning, Lord. Lord, we stopped by to tell you thank you this morning, Lord. Lord, when we checked our mobile devices, Lord, we didn't get that, that, that call of disaster in the middle of the night, Lord. You, you kept our loved ones, Lord. You kept our children, Lord. You kept our family members, Lord, Lord. And we just come out and tell you thank you this morning, Lord. Lord, it's all yours, Lord. I, I can't give you anything, Lord, because it all belongs to you, Lord. But I can give you my praise this morning, Lord. Lord, I can give you my gratitude this morning, Lord. Lord, because you're worthy, Lord, and I just thank you, Lord. Lord, if I had 10 million tons, I couldn't thank you enough, Lord. Lord, but as long as I got breath from my body, Lord, I'm going to tell you, Lord, I love you because you first loved me, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for looking out for me, Lord, when I wasn't looking out for myself, Lord. Lord, I just come by, Lord, to just tell you thank you this morning, Lord. Lord, thank you for my parents this morning. Thank you for my siblings this morning, Lord. Thank you for my church family this morning, Lord. Thank you for a church going mine this morning, Lord. Thank you for a praising mine this morning, Lord. Because it could have been worse than what it is, Lord. But I just come to tell you, thank you this morning, Lord. Lord, thank you for watching over my children last night, Lord. Lord, keep your arm of protection around them, Lord. Not just my children, Lord, for thank you for looking out for y'all children this morning, Lord. Lord, thank you this morning, Lord. Lord, thank you for blessing our aunts and our uncles, our grandparents, Lord. Lord, our cousins, Lord, our loved ones, Lord. Lord, we come out and tell you thank you for them this morning, Lord. We just thank you this morning, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you this morning, Lord. Thank you this morning, Lord. I can't thank you enough this morning, Lord. Thank you 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 this morning, Lord. Lord, go outside of these doors, Lord. Lord, go right down the street. They need you, Lord. Go on the corners. They need you, Lord. Go under the shade trees. They need you this morning, Lord. Go on the bridges, they need you this morning, Lord. Go in the nursing homes, they need you this morning, Lord. Lord, go in the jail cells, they need you this morning, Lord. Lord, go by the governor's mansion, Lord, they need you. Go by the Capitol this morning, Lord. Go by the White House, Lord. They need you this morning, Lord. We all need you, Lord. Lord, go down to Fordyce, Lord, they need you, Lord. Touch right now, Lord. Go overseas, they need you right now, Lord. Just touch right now, Lord. Touch minds, Lord. Touch bodies, Lord. Lord, touch blood pressure this morning, Lord. Touch dementia. Touch all time this morning, Lord. Touch arthritis this morning, Lord. Lord, touch stopped up ears, Lord. Lord, touch blinded eyes this morning, Lord. We need you, Lord. Touch aches and pains in our bodies, Lord. Touch disturbed minds this morning, Lord. Lord, touch ungrateful hearts this morning, Lord. Touch bitter hearts this morning, Lord. We need you right now, Lord, in these last and evil days, Lord. Touch our youth this morning, Lord. Lord, touch our teenagers, Lord. Lord, touch those, Lord, that are being victims of gun violence, Lord. Just touch right now, Lord. Lord, touch our young men and our young women, Lord. And let him know, Lord, that he made Adam for Eve, Lord, and not Adam for Steve, Lord. We just thank you right now this morning, Lord. Lord, it's an abomination, Lord. We're going to stand on your word this morning, Lord. It doesn't matter what the legislators say, Lord. It's all about what the words say. And you say, I made man for woman and woman for man, Lord. I just thank you this morning for the truth this morning, Lord. Lord, we know the truth will get us in trouble, Lord. But you said in your word, Lord, that if we suffer for you, Lord, 
that we will also reign for you, Lord, with you, Lord. And we thank you this morning, Lord. Lord, touch our shepherd of this house, Lord. Touch him from the top of his head, Lord, to the bottom of his feet, Lord. Lord, I know he gets tired sometimes. Lord, I know he gets weary sometimes, Lord. But just send him that small voice, Lord, and let's let him know, Lord, that it's going to be all right, Lord. Just touch right now all over the building, Lord. Those are that under the sound of my voice, Lord. Thank you, Lord, because you first loved us, Lord. And you sent your son, Lord, to cover for us, Lord, because we couldn't cover for ourselves, Lord. We just thank you this morning. In Jesus' name, I pray this prayer, Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I just want to praise you forever. Amen. Thank you, choir. Amen. Blessings and glory. Listen, I'm sure you've heard the term, uh, you've heard people say that you should count your blessings. And, you know, I, I understand what people are saying when they say count your blessing, but how in the world can you count all of the blessings that the Lord has bestowed upon us? That, that's why we just, we just thank him for everything. Listen, we, we say it, you hear me say it every Sunday. I say it every Sunday before I preach. You know, somebody laid down last night and they had plans to wake up the next day. But God called them on to be with him. That's why we ought to be thankful for every day. We've heard people say any day above ground is a good day. Well, I, I tend to agree with that. Listen, if you're alive and you're still here, that's a blessing. And as a child of God, every day is a blessed day because the Bible lets us know that every day is filled with new mercies. Yes, so we ought to be praising God yes, and thanking him for yet another day. We don't know about Monday, but since we're here on Sunday, right, yeah. we ought to be giving God the glory. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So what we're going to do now, uh, we're going to go ahead.
And I'm going to ask uh, Sister Campbell if you would come with our announcements. And after our announcements, uh, I'm going to come up uh, briefly before we turn the floor over to Sister Cross, who's going to share with us about our uh, mission assignment for this afternoon. Amen. Amen. Come on, praise God for Sister Campbell. Greater Rosa Sharon. I know it's this Sunday and it's almost Independence Day, but I'm just excited about what God is doing. Let me say it again. Good morning, Greater Rosa Sharon. That was for the Jesus. Now let's do it for the Holy Spirit. Now, good morning, Greater Rosa Sharon. I don't know about y'all. I came to praise the Lord in spite of all that is going on. So here we go. I have your announcement, and I'm your announcing clerk, Chris Campbell. And these are your announcements as follows. Give me a second. So we have CPR, first aid training certification. This is a free class. Uh, it's going to be on July the 6th here at Greater Rosa Sharon at 8 a.m. If you want to get your CPR certified, please place your name on the list in the lobby of the church. And there, uh, there is a room for t at least 20 on the list. This is an announcement from Pastor Cross. There will be no midweek Bible study for the month of July. We will resume Wednesday, August the 7th at 6 p.m. Thank you, Pastor Cross. Amen. Also, from Pastor, well, this is from the, for the church. We have our church business meeting. It's going to be July the 13th at 12 here at Greater Rosa Sharon. Amen. This is an announcement from Pastor Cross as well. The event is the 82nd Congress of Christian Education, um, starting on Monday, July the 22nd through Wednesday, July the 24th at St. John Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, morning classes are at 8 a.m. and evening classes are at 6 p.m. Pastor Cross will preach uh, the Congress Worship Hour message on Monday at 9.40 a.m. All are encouraged to attend. Thank you, Pastor Cross. Let's, this is a reminder. Intercessory prayer starts Sunday at 8.30 a.m. in person. Sunday school is at Sunday, 9 a.m. online and in person. Morning worship is on Sundays at 10 a.m. online and in person. And Bible study, which um, will resume in August, is on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. And these are our birthdays. So on the 30th is Sister Betty Alexander's birthday. That's today. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Uh, July the 4th, I'm just going to do the first week of July. July the 4th, we have Sean Howe. He's born on Independence Day. The sec Sean Howe the second. Uh, on uh, July the 5th is Martha Williams. Uh, July the 9th is Mother Joyce Williams. We have four on July the 9th. Hold so here you go. Uh, Kariba's on the 9th as well. Right. Kariba Williams. Also on the 9th is uh, Brendan Galloway and Brandon Galloway. Oh, huh? Yeah, the 20th. Oh, that's right. Their birthday's on the 9th. And again, we have the Greater Rose Sharon Church meeting on uh, the 13th. Um, the, so I'm just going to stop there. That's what we have that meeting. So. Dub yourself according on those birthdays. Uh, we do have a wedding uh, wedding anniversary on the 11th. Is Brother Jesse and Sister Phyllis uh, Eggerson for nine years. <laughs> so let us remember the sick, homeless, shut-in, oppressed, incarcerated, and those who are less fortunate than us. Let us remember them in visitation, financial giving, but most of all, let us remember them in my prayer. So if we have any visitors today, if you can please stand so the pastor can acknowledge you. We got all fam here today. Okay, then, thank you so much. Those are your announcements. Govern yourself accordingly. Amen. Thank you, Sister Campbell, for our announcements. I want to... Oh, pastor, I'm sorry. There was yes, one more. Okay. I apologize. That was a thank you card. Okay, let's read the card. 
Uh, this is a thank you card. Uh, thank you, Greater Rose, uh, for 116 boxes of cereal and 143 collected in service and vacation Bible school from the cereal drive committee with your sister Alexander, sister Cross, sister Hotshaw, and sister uh, Tonight Cross. Thank you. Amen. Amen. And how, how many boxes was that? All right, 116 boxes of cereal. Um, money was donated, donated. So for all of you who participated, we pray that God would bless you and just give it back to you 100-fold. Amen. So we thank God for you on today. Uh, those children will definitely be blessed from our efforts. Uh, you know, some churches are getting 5,000 boxes, some $5,000. But, you know, whatever little bit you can contribute... <laughs> It all counts and makes a difference. So whatever you gave, if you just gave one dollar, praise God for that dollar. Amen. So we thank God for everyone who participated. Uh, let me reiterate a few points about the uh, Congress of Christian Education. That's going to be taking place Monday, July 22nd through Wednesday, July 24th at St. John Missionary Baptist Church. Um, son, uh, that Monday, um, I'm on to preach the Congress worship hour. And that actually will be starting after the classes. Classes start that morning at 8 a.m. to 10.30. And then the worship hour starts from 10.40 to 11.40. So uh, if you're able to make it out at St. John on Monday the 22nd, listen, it would be good to see you when I come, up, come and worship with uh, St. John during the Congress of Christian Education. So uh, we're going to get registered. Classes are free. You don't have to pay anything. So if you... Uh, feel led by the Spirit, you're available. Uh, let's attend the classes. Uh, uh, you, we can't learn too much uh, about our Lord and Savior. We can't learn too much about serving. The classes will be uh, the list of classes. I have it out here in the foyer. Uh, we'll get it posted on our page so uh, you can look and see if there's something that you're interested in uh, signing up for. Like I said, it's not going to cost you a dime, just your time. Amen. So, uh, those of you who can and will listen, let's participate and let's, let's support this opportunity to learn more about our Lord and Savior. Amen. At this time, we're going to bring Sister Cross up and she's going to talk to us about our mission project. Yes, ma'am. director or coordinator uh, so thank you all so very much I've said over and over that mission is a church effort it's everybody's in the mission department because we all are here to uh, do what God would ask us to do and if you read the Great Commission with us every Sunday we are doing what he wants us to do so let's continue to go to there for so today is an opportunity for everyone uh, to take part in our nurse, nursing home ministry, which is at the Blossoms at Midtown Rehab and Nursing uh, Center. It is going to be at 2 p.m. The information is on the uh, on the board now. And we will go, we will have a service with the guests, the uh, residents there. We have preaching, we have singing, and we have fellowshipping and prayer. So it is always a blessing when we go. If you've never been, I want to encourage you to come out with us because uh, it's people in there as young as 20, 25 years old who are rehabbing from different things, strokes, uh, heart attacks, injuries, and they don't have close family that can take care of them at home. Well, they're there. And then we have some residents who've been there a long time and look forward to us coming. So if you can, if you've never gone before, I want to encourage you all to meet us out there at 2 o'clock. We don't stay two or three hours. We're just there, uh, I think, maybe an hour uh, at the most. And we have the opportunity, again, we hear a good word. Uh, the residents enjoy seeing uh, people to come out and just visit with them. And we always have good prayer, always have good prayer, and always have good singing. So choir. The ones not riding with me, we encourage you all <laughs> to come on out at 2 o'clock, and that's where we'll be. So to God be the glory. Thank you again for all of your efforts in the mission department. Amen. Once again, church, we can't serve God without serving people. Uh, so we want to be a blessing to those residents at the nursing home. 
Um, we don't know which direction life will take us. One day we may be there ourselves. Uh, so let's go out. And those of you who can and will, let's go out and support. Um, sometimes those folks just want somebody to talk to. Amen. So let's just go and be a blessing. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to continue to worship, and that is worshiping through giving. And at this time, we're going to ask everyone, if you would, to please stand and begin to proceed from the rear. Praise the Lord, saints. Um, we, as we get ready for to hear the word of God, I just uh, want to say thank, thank you to the Lord for just blessing us to see another day. He's amazing, and his grace is so sufficient for us. Amen. Amazing grace shall always be my song of praise. For it was grace that bought my liberty. I do not know just how he came to love me so. But he looked beyond all of my faults, and he saw my need. I gotta say that again. Amazing grace shall always be my song of praise. For it was grace that bought my liberty. I do not know just how he came to love me so. But he looked beyond all of my faults, and he saw my need. I shall forever lift my eyes to Calvary to view the cross where my Jesus died for me. How marvelous is grace that caught my falling soul. He looked beyond, he looked beyond, he looked beyond all of my faults, and he saw. 
got to say that again. I shall forever lift my eyes to Calvary to view the cross where my Jesus died for me. God for him looking beyond our faults and supplying our every need. God, we come now in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We praise you, Lord. We bless your name because you are worthy of all praise, Lord. We ask you for forgiveness of our sins and our shortcomings, Lord. And now, Father, as I stand to proclaim your good news on this day, I pray that your word would fall on good ground on today, touch the hearts of men, women, boys, and girls, Father God, we pray, Lord, that you would hide me behind the shadow of Calvary's cross. We pray, Lord, that uh, people would uh, see none of me and hear all of you. We thank you, Father God, for your grace. We thank you for mercy, Lord. And it's in the matchless name of Jesus, your Christ, we pray and ask it all. Amen and thank you, God. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. He's worthy. <clears throat> He is worthy of all of our praise. We thank the choir for uh, going ahead and blessing us on today. Listen, uh, sometimes you just got to go ahead and run on. Amen. And, and we praise God for, for you all ministering to us. Amen. It's fifth Sunday. I know we probably, we probably you know, in 4th fourth of, fourth of July mode. That's all right. Amen. We, we're ready for the, <laughs> for the holiday. Amen. Amen. But... Uh, there's a word from the Lord this morning. Uh, we're going to be in Acts chapter 12. And we're going to look at verses 1 through 5. Acts 12, verses 1 through 5. <coughs> Acts 12, verses 1 through 5. And if you haven't, let it be known by saying amen. amen. <clears throat> and it reads, Now about that time Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had uh, apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quadrants of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Verse number five says, Peter therefore was kept in prison but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. I want to talk this morning about the power of the prayer meeting. The power of the prayer meeting. The latter part of verse number five says, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. <clears throat> this past few Bible study sessions, I've been talking about the subject of prayer. Uh, one thing that I have uh, mentioned, whether it's preaching or teaching, that faith is the key component to prayer. And there's nothing too large or too small to go before God uh, in prayer. Sometimes we will look at a situation and we think that we are experienced enough, we've dealt with this and that, 
uh, we don't really need to pray about that because we, we've, we've been in these situations before. Well, you still need prayer. Uh, there may be something that you think is out of God's reach, out of God's hand. Uh, just know he is in control of all things. So uh, even though we feel like uh, there won't be any positive turnout, but if we believe that God is able to do all things but fail, then we won't hesitate to pray even about those things. So when it comes down to prayer, brothers and sisters, uh, whatever it is you're dealing with in your own life, just know that prayer works. And see, in our churches, we, we have meetings. We have all types of meetings. We, there's, there's church business meetings. We have uh, deacons meetings. Or, uh, we have mission meetings. Uh, but the most important meeting is the prayer meeting. Uh, when it comes down to prayer, this is something that you don't have to be or have been in church for a certain length of time before God hears your prayer. Uh, you, you're not uh, so young in the faith or so young in age uh, that God won't hear your prayer. Uh, but when it comes down to going before God, prayer is simply a conversation from a child with his father. And I understand that when we were young, we were taught how to pray. Uh, last week, I believe it was last week, when we went down through the Lord's Prayer, and, and then Mom and them taught us how to pray, you know. Uh, but, but prayer, in its simply, uh, simple definition, is just a conversation with the Lord. Uh, and there are times when uh, we have to have a conversation with the Lord. You know, when we talked about the Lord's Prayer on, on the model prayer last Sunday, uh, we went down through it, and uh, many of us, for years, we just simply recited the Lord's Prayer. Uh, but we got some things going on in our life we need to talk to him about. Uh, and, and that's all prayer is, is a conversation with the Lord. Uh, you can just tell the Lord, Lord, I got a headache. Uh, Lord, the Lord hears that. You can even tell the Lord, I got to deal with some folks that give me a headache. Uh, <laughs> however you want to talk to him, uh, you, you can talk to him about anything. Uh, and in our text this morning, uh, the church is facing persecution. And Herod is arresting Christians. And in a, in a political move, uh, he is arresting Christians uh, to impress the religious leaders. Uh, he has James, the brother of John, executed. Uh, and sometimes those in leadership, uh, they will make moves just to impress certain crowds. Uh, uh, leaders have been making decisions to impress people and, and impress their base for a long time. Uh, now Herod, he intended to kill Peter also. Let, let's, let's see what it says in the text. Now, about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, <clears throat> the brother of John, with the sword. Now, look at verse 3. It says, and because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Don't you know, sometimes... What the devil meant for bad, yes, sir. Amen. God meant for good. <clears throat> See, things happen in life, and sometimes we wonder. We will ask the question, Lord, why me? You see, a lot of times we don't see the big picture. We don't know what God has in store uh, for us or the people around us. You see, sometimes things happen. And God is using you because what God is doing in your life, other people will see it. You may be asking yourself, well, Reverend, what is, what is exactly that supposed to mean? Well, listen. When the three Hebrew boys were thrown into the fiery furnace, everyone knew that the fiery furnace existed. They knew that the king would have thrown people in the furnace before, but then when those three were thrown in, 
something happened. Nebuchadnezzar jumped up from his throne and he says, now wait a minute. Didn't we throw three in? And then he himself says, I see a fourth person walking around in the fire and he looks like the son of God. You see, sometimes God will throw you in the fire. He may throw you in the lion's den. But sometimes we have to go through that unpleasant situation so we and others can see the Lord show up in our lives. And here Peter is. J James ha has already been murdered. And Herod intends to do the same thing to Peter. But when the Lord intervenes, watch what he did. It says, and because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison, delivered him to four quadrants of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Now, we could look at many different examples throughout Scripture of how God worked and moved in a miraculous way. But what I want us to gather and gain from this message this morning is verse number five says that the church went down in prayer for Peter. And brothers and sisters, just know you can pray at home in your private place. You can pray with your spouse. You can pray as a family. Uh, but the text says, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church. So, so when, when the church comes together and pray, whether we are in one location or on one accord, because we, we may not necessarily all assemble in the prayer meeting. We should. We should. But in the event that we're not in the same location, we ought to be on the same frequency. And Peter found himself in prison, but Peter didn't even realize that the church was praying for him. Don't you know folks don't need to know that you're praying for them? You know, sometimes, you know, we, uh, when we find out someone is going through something, you know, someone we interact with, friend, co-worker, family member, and sometimes we tell them, you know what, I'm going to pray for you. Well, listen, whether you tell them or not, if you go down in prayer on their behalf, whether they realize it or not, yes, it's comforting for them to hear you say you're going to pray for them. But whether you tell them or not, Peter didn't know the church was praying for him because he's in prison. But when the church got word that Peter, uh, they already know James been killed. And now the word is out that he, he, Herod plans to do the same thing to Peter. Once the church got the word, the church went down in prayer. And, and brothers and sisters, I wonder, is there anything that ever happens that just causes us, 2024, that causes us to go down in prayer? You see, Jesus himself said, my house, y'all look at the front of this podium. My house shall be called a house of prayer. <laughs> now, I used to kind of harp on prayer meetings. I kind of eased up on it. I kind of eased up on it. Him, his, I'm going to tell you why. You see, when we started the, the initial 830 prayer meeting, I asked the men to meet me here in the fellowship hall. And it had to be 12, 13, 15 men back. And we got on our knees in, the, in a circle of prayer. And there was some power in that room on that day. And I started, and y'all, if you think back now, I, you know, y'all need to come to prayer meeting, come to prayer meeting. Well, listen, there have been times where we had prayer meetings. There were two people. 
three people. And there have been times Parker was in there praying by himself. And I was feeling a certain way about it. Then the Holy Spirit told me something. He said, listen, it don't take a room full of folks for the prayer to get through. As long as somebody's praying. As long as somebody. He, he did say, my house shall be called a house of prayer. And if there's somebody within the body of Christ, and we don't have any way of knowing. We don't have any way of knowing. Now, see, I know who's here be because you're here. <laughs> but just because you're not here doesn't mean that you're not praying. <laughs> and as long as the church is in connection with God through prayer, God can still and will move in mighty ways. Peter was locked up in prison. And the church knew that Peter had a, had, a, had a situation that wasn't anything they could do but pray. And church, just know there are things happening in this world. There are things happening in our personal lives where the only thing we can do, your only option is prayer. If you're in a financial situation, Hopefully you can hold out until payday comes. Or you may be able to get a loan. Somebody help you out. So somebody may be able to help with that. You need something, there's somebody you can call on who can, can help you out with this situation. There's Sometimes there are people we can reach out to. There are resources available that can help us. But then there are times where your only option is to go down on your knees and pray. And the thing about prayer is, don't you know sometimes, y'all got to catch this right here. Sometimes God would draw up the other resources just so you will call on him. See, sometimes we've been too dependent on other things. And I'll admit, I'll admit, since I've been grown and since I've been preaching, when the finances got tough and the overtime was just available on the job, instead of just being a better steward, somebody ought to say amen, amen. instead of being a, a better steward over the finances, I knew overtime was available, I said, all right, well, I just work all day. Eight hours of time and a half, yeah, that'll fix some things. But then, guess what the post office did? They drew, they, the, the, the overtime dried up. Uh, well, now you ain't got a choice but to be a better steward. And it got to a point where I told the Lord, Lord, I, I asked for forgiveness because my thing was, oh, you know, we just work a little overtime, you know, two hours here, two hours here, catch an off day, 10 hours overtime, that'll take care of this little problem over here. But when the overtime drew up, I was like, all right, Lord, I ain't got no choice now. Not only to trust in him, but I got to be a better steward. I ain't going to be able to go to McDonald's <laughs> every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you're going to have to be a better steward. Yeah. And, and being a good steward over what the Lord bless you with, yeah. uh -huh. that is a requirement as believers. Uh -huh. you got to be a good steward. Yeah. And it's a funny thing because a lot of us are praying for a financial breakthrough. Well, listen, God's not going to do anything to allow you to harm yourself. Because if you're not a good steward of $100, why would he give you 100000 But But when you do your best with what you have, if he so chooses, he may bless you with an increase. But we got to be good stewards. But, but when we look at what Peter's dealing with, he's seen James killed. He wanted to, Herod wanted to do this in front of as many people as possible. But Peter, even though he was in prison, he didn't realize it, but verse 5 says, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church for him. Now see, it's, it's a powerful display of faith when the church comes together on one accord. 
The prayers of the church had a direct impact on Peter's release. Now, as I mentioned, our individual prayers are effective and avail as much, according to James 5 and 16. But when the whole church came together to specifically pray for Peter, the Lord performed a miracle. And I don't know if y'all even realize it, but we do this right here at Rosa Sheldon. When we get the word of our sick and shut in, the church is asked to pray. Everybody doesn't have to be in the building to pray. And like I said, I've, I've backed up about harping on prayer meeting attendance because everybody in the building knows what time prayer meeting is. But if we're not together in the building, we ought to be together on one accord about the importance of prayer. As a matter of fact, if you can't make it at 8.30 in the building, well, wherever you are at 8.30, you know what we're doing. So whether you're in the car at the house at 8.30, if the Lord has woke you up, listen, let's, let's come together in a, in a prayer posture. Because if you believe, listen, if you believe that prayer works, if you believe prayer changes things, then you ought to want to take all of your concerns to the Lord in prayer. You see, Herod intended to take Peter's life, but because of the church continuing to pray, the Lord performed a miracle. Let's, let's see what happened. Let me go ahead and read verse 6. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains and the keepers before the door kept the prison and behold the angel and behold the angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shined in the prison and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up saying arise up quickly and his chains fell off from his hands and the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garments about thee and follow me. The angel came. He released Peter. Smote him on the side. Basically said, Get up. Put your clothes on. We're finna get out of here. Sometimes God would do it that way. He, he, he may not send an angel to you. Or he may send someone who is your particular angel in that particular situation. I uh, see we we sometimes we're looking for the heavenly being. Uh, well, you know, mama may show up, daddy may show up, uh, you know, your your best friend may show up. God can use whoever he chooses. And in this situation, even though it seemed like all hope was lost for Peter, what sparked the miracle was the church praying for him. That is why, brothers and sisters, we cannot abuse or misuse the privilege of prayer. And, and it's, it's a sad thing for a believer that won't pray. I've mentioned this in Bible study, something wrong. Listen, you are too busy if you're too busy to pray. If you don't take the time to pray, if you don't spend time in prayer, you not only are you missing out on what prayer will do for you as an individual, but there are people that you should be interceding for. Don't you know that you can pray for the salvation of a lost person? Some people are saying, well, what, what do we pray about? Listen, the list is, is too long to number. We can pray about everything. You got a situation on your job? Pray about it. There's violence in our neighborhood, in our community. Pray about it. There's still a war going on overseas. Pray about it. There's an election coming up soon. You sure enough better pray about it. <laughs> we saw the debate. Pray about it. <laughs> Don't ever think that something is beyond the hand reach of God. What happened in the text is that the church got together to pray, and the text says prayer was made without ceasing. So the church continued to pray. So, so how, do we, how do we incorporate prayer without ceasing within the church? 
if we all take on the responsibility of being a praying Christian, because it starts with each individual, because we as believers, we make up the church. Now, will there ever be 40 people in prayer meeting? Well, based on the history, probably not. But the Lord can blow our mind. But since he don't need 40 people in the room to get it done, as long as we are in a prayer mode, a prayer frequency, we are on one accord, whether you're in the building or, or, or Little Rock, Conway, Jacksonville, or the other side of the planet, if we are on one accord in prayer, God can do, and in some cases will do, what we ask in faith. You see... If we believe he's able to do all things but faith, then we could take everything to him in prayer. It was mentioned in Sunday school, you know, sometimes we look at a person or sometimes we look at their situation and we'll be like, no, ain't, ain't no hope for them. Ain't no hope for that situation. Well, if you really believe that he's able to do all things, I mean all things, then you, I don't care what the doctor say. And I, I'm big on that one. But see, the doctors, yeah, they got a little education. Uh, well, let me rephrase that. They got a lot of education. But the doctors do not have the final say-so. As a child of God, it don't matter what the doctors have diagnosed over your body, your situation. God has the power. To heal all sickness and disease. And you got to believe that. You see, some folk give up. Once the doctor said this, they give up. Listen, if you're a child of God, you hold on until you take your last breath. Because God is able to do all things but fail. Here Peter is. He's in jail. He's locked up. He's in prison. The church was praying for him. And Peter didn't realize what was going down between verses 6 through 9. He, Peter didn't know. Until the angel showed up. And when the angel showed up, let me look at verse 9. And he went out and followed him. This is Peter. He followed the angel. And he went out and followed him and wished not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. See, keep in mind, Peter was human. And the Lord was, had just worked a miracle. And Peter was at that point where he, he really wasn't sure what was happening. It's right here in the text. And he went out and followed him. They told him to follow him. And wist not that he was, that it was true, which was done by the angel. But he thought he saw a vision. Verse 10. And when they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate, that which leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of its own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. You know, if you, if you study the Bible, when, when the angels come through, angels are messengers of God, servants of God. The angel come through. Once the angel do what he's supposed to do, he go. Angel came in, woke Peter up. Hey, get up, get your clothes on, follow me. He followed the angel. The gate you can read the text if you're familiar with it. The iron gate just opened up. And once we got to that point, it was almost like the say, angel said, all right, Peter, you got it from here. And he left. The Lord sent an angel, perform the miracle. And some people are hesitant to believe in miracles. Well, let me tell you something. If you woke up this morning, that's a miracle. <laughs> when it come down to to you waking up this morning. Somebody said, well, the alarm clock went off. Well, has anybody ever overslept? <laughs> Did y'all catch that? If, if it was the alarm clock that woke you up, what about the time you overslept? <laughs> it was the Lord. <laughs> Sometimes you, you, you look around and you don't think miracles still happen. How many times has severe weather come through Little Rock? Each time we've had a major event weather event here I have not gotten one single call about a member of Rose of Sharon whose house blew away 
who, did, who, who or they blew away. <laughs> when you think about it, think back, back, back to COVID. Some churches lost a whole lot of folks. If I'm not mistaken, we didn't lose anybody due to COVID-19. Somebody ought to tell the Lord, thank you. <laughs> you see, sometimes you got to look back over your life and, and start thinking about if miracles are still happening. <laughs> How many times have you prayed for that wayward child? And, and, and then one day, one day the light bulb just went off. It, it blew your mind. Because you didn't see it coming. It's almost like you had faith, but yet you were seeing what was going on. See, sometimes there's a balance between having faith and spending too much time looking at what's going on. <laughs> but, but when faith takes over, sometimes, and this is why I talked about the prayer journal, sometimes there are things you prayed about and you forgot about it. But then the Lord will do something. That way with child, you think ain't no hope for them. You still love them. And you're loving on them even in the midst of their stuff. But then one day, it's like the light bulb goes off in their life. And you can't help but tell the Lord, thank you, because you know how long you've been praying for. He is still performing miracles. And if we trust that God is able to do all things. See, we're reading about the miracle that was performed in the life of Peter. But, but the, the genesis of what took place was that the church, without ceasing, made prayers to God for him. And if we can really embrace the power of the prayer meeting, things will happen that will blow our mind. Even though we know God is able, sometimes God will show you something. Because we, we know it's not a matter of if he's able. We, we're reading about it. We know he's all-powerful. We know he's omnipresent. We, we know these things, but sometimes got to, sometime God got to show you. So you, you don't have the same shout when he performs a miracle in my life as, he, as you would shout when he performed a miracle in your own life. <laughs> you see, sometimes you get to thinking, you, you, you're looking at the reality of what's taking place, and sometimes your faith is in question. But when you, when God does it for you, now granted, we ought to celebrate when, when the Lord blesses any believer. But when the Lord does it in your life, if there was ever a time to jump and shout, you ought to be, listen, you ought to be going crazy when God has done something in your life that you've been praying for and proving to you that he's able to do all things but fail. Listen, when it comes down to prayer, prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. The angel came, released Peter from prison, and when we look through, down through verses number uh, 6 through 10, we see how the gate opened up and angel left and Peter went on his way in verse number 11 it says and when Peter was come to himself keep in mind he, he thought he saw a vision he, sometimes God can do something that's so amazing it take you a minute to gather yourself and when Peter was come to himself he said now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and have delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all expectation of the people of the Jews. D don't miss what's in verse number 11. What was happening to Peter, it kind of blew his mind. He thought it was a vision. But verse 11 says, and when Peter was come to himself, when he had time to think about it, when, when he had time to reason, when, when he looked back, he says, now I know of a surety. Now, keep in mind how long Peter has been in ministry. Uh -huh, uh -huh. He's not a new convert. Right, right. The only reason he was in trouble is because he was doing the Lord's will in the first place. Uh -huh. And sometimes, church, you will find yourself in trouble for doing the Lord's will in the first place. <laughs> and here Peter is. He says, now I know of a surety yeah. that the Lord has sent his angel 
and had delivered me. Think about that. that this was not Peter in the beginning of his ministry. Right. Here he is. He is as a, as serving the Lord. He's out here doing the will of God. And now Peter testifies and says, now I know. Sometimes the Lord, I don't care how long you've been in this. Sometimes the Lord will do something in your life as long as you've been saved. As long as you've been going to church. As long as you've been preaching. As long as you've been teaching. As long as you've been praying. Sometimes something will happen to reassure your faith to let you know and you can talk just like Peter did and say now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and had delivered me out of the hand of Herod. See the way we say it we would say something like if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side. See, see we know when we have experienced some things but even though we're it's not a lack of faith. Sometimes God will do something. And you will say, just like Peter said, now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel. Now let, let's look at verse 12. It says, and when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. Y'all watch this. Don't, don't miss this right here. came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, <clears throat> where many were gathered together praying. Y'all see that. Many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. Now, I, I got to connect the dots. Here they are. Keep in mind, verse 5. The church was made, prayer was made of the church without ceasing unto God for him. Now, Peter is knocking at the door. Rhoda knew his voice. She was so happy that she couldn't open the door and she ran back into the prayer meeting and told them that Peter was at the door. Now, let's look at verse 15. And they said unto her, Thou art mad. Basically, they said, Girl, you must be crazy. And they said unto her, Thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then said they, It is his angel. Now, point that I have to make. Sometimes there are those that are participating in prayer that lack faith. There there are people in the prayer meeting, in the prayer circle, that have some doubt. Now, the church came together and prayed. But when the Lord answered the prayer, sometimes, even though we're praying and believing God is able, sometimes it's hard to wrap your brain around the reality of God answering the prayer. Because it, what, now notice, Rhoda, it says a damsel. So it's a young girl. She heard Peter's voice, knew Peter's voice. Verse 13, and, and as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the door. She was so excited, so happy. She opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. Now, the church is praying for Peter. She runs and says, Peter's at the door. And somebody said, girl, you must be out of your mind. 
And they said unto her, Thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then said they, It is his angel. Verse 16, But Peter continued knocking. And when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. Didn't you, didn't you hear me say earlier, sometimes God will do something to you, through you, for people to see? Here, they were praying for Peter. Verse 5 confirms that, that the church was praying. And when Peter showed up, I don't know what, what Rhoda was doing while everybody else was praying, but she went to the door. I don't know if she just heard his voice, if she looked through the peephole, but, but she saw it was Peter, and she, being in the prayer meeting, knowing that they're praying for Peter, once she saw Peter, heard his voice, she ran back inside, told everyone that Peter was present, and somebody, I don't know who it was, but somebody said, girl, you must be mad. So, so, something, no, we, Peter in jail. That, that's why we're here, Peter in jail. Not understanding, not, just like Peter didn't realize the church was praying for him, the church didn't realize Peter had been delivered. <laughs> don't you know, sometimes, Lord have mercy, sometimes you don't realize when people have been delivered. Y'all missed that. That flew over your head. I, I try to explain it. I try to explain it. So, sometimes you don't realize when people have been delivered. See, sometimes people still look the same. So, so, some, people, some people still look the same. They still look the way they look when they were out there. When you see them, they still look the same. But there are some people who have been delivered. And, and they can't, just like Peter, he couldn't wait to get back to the house. There are people who can't wait to get back to the Lord's house. And yeah, they may still look the same way. Matter of fact, that, that, that young lady who's been walking the streets and, and the Lord changed her heart. And she can't wait to get back to the church. Well, guess what? She show up at the church the same way she looked when she walked the streets. And, and the same folks that told Rhoda she must be crazy, there's some folks in church that will look at her and say, you must be crazy coming in here. But the truth of the matter is, if they have been changed, it don't matter what it looked like on the outside. <laughs> because, see, everybody don't clean. You necessarily, listen, you clean up on the inside first. And once you clean up on the inside, <laughs> Then it will begin to be shown on the outside. <laughs> there have been people that the Lord have been delivered, not only from the crack house, but delivered them in the crack house. <laughs> and when they can't help but give God praise, they show up in the church. Listen, just the same way they look when they were in the world. Well, guess what? Listen, when they come in, they ought to just, you ought to just welcome them in. But see, let them walk in. You can tell. You'll find out then who the fun acting folks in church are. <laughs> you'll find out right then. <laughs> Somebody walking the streets, yeah, they, and they, they may not be uh, uh, so fresh and presentable. But they just, they just knew they need to get into God's house. <laughs> and some folks would be happy to see them. And some folks, if they sit on your pew, you're going to get up and move. <laughs> I'm just telling the truth. You ain't got to say amen because I already know. <laughs> Listen, when God changes the heart of a person and they come running to seek the Lord, the church ought to embrace them because it wasn't so long ago when we were out there, looked like the world, act like the world, smell like the world. It wasn't that long ago, but when we met the Lord and he changed our heart, once we confess with our mouth that he died and he, he rose again, we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and we believed in our heart that, that he died and he rose again on the third day. The Bible said that thou shalt be saved. When we applied that and the Lord changed our heart, we couldn't help but come running into him.
Peter, he stood at the door and knocked. Rhoda got so excited. She told him Peter's outside. The folks told the girl something wrong with you because Peter's in jail. Verse 16 says, but Peter, but Peter continued knocking. And when he saw, when he had opened the door and saw and they saw him, they were astonished. God has a way of doing things that'll blow your mind. Verse 17, but he beckoned unto them with the hand to hold their peace. Declare declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out. He testified. He told them everything just happened. How the Lord had brought him out of the prison, and he said, Go show these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. So that latter part, verses 15 through 17, they didn't just hang out in the prayer meeting. Peter, he said, Listen, let me tell y'all what happened. He shared the story. He showed him, he told him everything the Lord had done for him. He, he testified of the, of the, the, the wonder-working miracles of God. And then he says, he says, now, go show these things unto James. And, and he departed and went to another place. So once God has blessed you, we're not supposed to just sit around and just shout about the blessing. It's time to go tell somebody about what the Lord have done. See, I, I believe, and this is just my opinion, a lot of times we stop at celebrating what God has done for us. Because we've been through the storm. In some cases, it's been a long, uh, it's been a long, painful storm. But then the Lord brings us out. And we're so happy that the storm is over. We're so happy that we come out. And we celebrate, we praise God, we thank God. Well, listen, ain't nothing wrong with shouting. Ain't nothing wrong with telling the Lord, thank you. Well, listen, okay, now that you're done shouting, go tell somebody of what the Lord did for you. Go tell your story of how the Lord delivered you. Peter shared with the church how the angel came in and delivered him. And if you, brothers and sisters, I'm talking to you now, if, if the Lord have delivered you from anything, you need to go tell somebody how the Lord did it for you. Don't you know that there's someone who is going through, if not the same thing, something similar, similar to what you have gone through, and because you know from experience how the Lord brought you out of it. Don't you know it is, it is your mission, your obligation to tell somebody how the Lord did it for you. You see, everybody wasn't on drugs or alcohol. Let's say you were, and the Lord delivered you from that. You ought to be reaching out to somebody that you know who has that, they're under that same stronghold. But that may not have been your thing. You may have been that single mother trying to raise your children. It was tough, but the Lord made a way. And you know a young mother, single mother. Well, guess what? You need to encourage her. Because the, you know what the Lord did for you. You're married. You've been married 30, 40, 50 years. And you know some married folks. And they bet they, they're at odds. They're about to throw in the towel. And you can tell them, look. We've been married for half a century, and it ain't been easy. But if you hold on, if you've been there, so you can talk to him. You see, Peter, once he went through, he shared everything, what happened. And then verse number 17, but he beckoned unto them with the hand to hold their peace. In other words, listen, y'all stop shouting, y'all listen. He says, he declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. He declared to them how the Lord brought him out of the prison. So you ought to look at this part of the text, and you should declare unto people how the Lord brought you out of that storm, how he brought you out of that situation, how he brought you out of that issue. 
And then he said in verse latter part, of verse 17, and he said, Go show these things unto James and unto the brethren. And he departed and went to another place. Listen, the Lord brought you out. Go tell somebody. Go tell them about it. <laughs> somebody is in a situation and they are about to give up. And you need to be able to let them know, listen, there's still hope. I know it looked rough. I know it's tough. But if you just hold on, God will see you through. We, you know, we say in church, y'all probably heard it. Listen, the God, God will pull you through if we can stay in the pool. Y'all remember hearing that in church? Listen, I'm not going to dare say as a believer you're not going to deal with some extremely difficult things in life. But what I will say is that the Lord promised that he would never leave us nor forsake us. Listen, there's power in the prayer meeting. And in the event that, once again, if we're not in the same location, we ought to be on the same, ought to be on one accord about the power of prayer. And if we're praying for one another, because everybody dealing with their own thing, everybody got their own prayer journal, everybody got their own prayer list. But if we're all praying, if everybody's praying, see, God can sort it out. He knows what he's going to do in Cross's life. He knows what he's going to do in Walker's life. He knows what he's going to do in Tucker's life. He knows what he's going to do in Johnson's life. He, he knows what he's going to do in Walker's life. He, he knows what he's going to do. But if we're praying and just casting it on him, in due time, God's going to work it out. And that's when we can come in here. See, that's why I don't try to pump and pram you to praise God. You know, I, 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 can't, I can't do it. You know what I'm saying? Y'all been in some churches where they, they got the, the worship leader and, and nothing against worship leaders. But you got folks, oh, stand up to your feet. Come on, let's give God some praise. No, y'all can do better than that. You, you know, you hear that type of thing. You know, no, I don't do all that. I'm going to tell you why. Because if you can't shout on your own about what the Lord has done for you, ain't letting cross can do to help you. <laughs> See, I, I don't know your storm. <laughs> I don't know your situation. But you know what God has brought you through. You know the storm that you've been brought through. You, you know the prayer that was answered. And if you know that, you ought to be shouting like something wrong with you because the Lord has been entirely too good. And whenever we think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for us, this our soul ought to get happy. And it was all fixed up on an old rugged cross <laughs> when they put nails in his hands and they put nails in his feet and they lifted him up between heaven and earth and they they pissed him in the side and he he hung from the sixth to the ninth hour and then he dropped his head in locks of his shoulders he died but on the third day he got up with all power in his hands and because he lives we can face tomorrow somebody ought to give the lord praise because he is worthy he is worthy of all praise there's power in the prayer meeting. If we get together and pray, listen, whatever we think is impossible, the Bible tells us through Christ all things are possible. I'm believing God for the impossible. There's some folk dealing with some sickness. God got to find a say so. There's some folk dealing with some marital problems. God got to find a say so. Some of us got that, that wayward child. Make you think that they, they didn't even come from your womb. But, that, but that, listen, God can get them. There's some things going Some of us, some people, and y'all know I am not by any means a political preacher. But when it comes down to the election, there are people that are nervous. There are people that are saying we ain't got damn good choice between the two of them. Listen, y'all. Listen. I don't care who wins. Because I serve the one who done already won. It does not matter. I will never tell you which direction to vote. I will not do it. You follow the Holy Spirit direction. But whoever wins... I'm not going to shout either way because the Lord is the one that's in control. And if we continue to trust God, let the church say that, trust God. If you trust God, listen, we don't have anything to worry about. You just put it in God's hand and leave it.
Come on, give the Lord a hand, clap of praise. <laughs> Father, we come now to close of this sermon. We thank you. We praise you, Lord. We, we thank you for the privilege and the power of prayer. We know, Father God, that you hear and answer prayer. So, Father God, whatever your people are going through on today, Master, we pray in Jesus' name that your will be done, Heavenly Father. We pray, Lord God, that you would listen in to your servant's prayer. Somebody dealing with something heavy, Lord, I pray that you would touch them right now. Somebody is dealing with some sickness, Father God, I pray that you would touch them right now. Father God, somebody's doing all right, Father God, and, and they just want to thank you for everything as well as it is, Father God. We pray, Lord, that whatever your people are dealing with today, Lord, we pray that you would move by your spirit, Heavenly Father. And Lord, once you bring us out of the storm, Lord, let us go back and tell somebody who's still in the storm that you are able to heal and deliver. Lord, we thank you just for being God and being God alone. And we'll be mindful to give you the praise, honor, and glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 There may be one here today who has never accepted Christ as Lord and Savior. There may be one here who stands in need of prayer. Jesus said, my house should be called a house of prayer. There may be one here today you are already saved, but you don't have a church home, and you, you know that you, uh, the Holy Spirit is telling you it's time to make a decision to unite with one of his churches, whatever your case may be. If you're here this morning, you feel the Holy Spirit speaking to your heart, don't put off until tomorrow, which you can do right now. As we're standing all over the building, you can come by letter, Christian experience, or candidate for baptism. All the Lord wants you to do is call. Would that be one?